Today, my lady. We will now begin the regular press conference by Minister Kamikawa. From the 8th of October to the 13th of October, I'll be making my very first bilateral visit as Minister of Foreign Affairs to Brunei, Vietnam, Laos, and Thai. I'll be meeting Minister of Foreign Affairs to R1 in Brunei and Minister of Foreign Affairs Son in Vietnam, as well as Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs Tham Sai in Laos and Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs Pampi in Thailand, as well as other high-level government officials. Through this visit, we would like to confirm the collaboration to maintain and strengthen free and open international order based on the rule of law with our very important partners, as well as deepening the collaboration on a wide range of topics, including economy, politics, national security, and human exchange, as well as to respond to regional and international, as well as global issues. Also, December this year, we'll be holding the commemorative summit for the 50th year of ASEAN-Japan friendship and cooperation. And I would like to uh, confirm uh, the close collaboration. Today, in Armenia and Azerbaijan, the displaced people from those countries and to flood a damage in East Libya, uh, we will be we decided uh, to provide assistance of the total of uh, five million dollars as emergency grant in aid for Armenia and Azerbaijan on September 19th. Uh, there was military activity which was implemented by Azerbaijan, and as a result, there are over 100,000 displaced people through international institutions in the area of daily necessities and health care. We will be providing support of $2 million. With respect to Libya, from September 10th to 11th, uh, there was flood uh, in the east part of the country. Uh, there is severe damage, and bearing that in mind, through international institution in the area of health and water, uh, we will be implementing assistance of $3 million. As the Japanese government, uh, we will be expeditiously providing support, and we will like to continue to stay with the people in the region based on the needs of the local areas. We would like to think about further support. We have already made a press release, but as I talked about the other day, uh, I am conducting outreach diplomatic activities in Japan. And on the 4th of October, I participated in the luncheon hosted by the members of Council of Arab Ambassadors, made of uh, 20 countries and nations. I was able to meet Ambassador Walid Ali Siam, representative of Permanent General Mission of Palestine, as well as other ambassadors that I have known over many years. And we had a fruitful discussion. Also, yesterday on the 5th, with the attendance of Her Imperial Highness Princess Takamado, I participated in the opening ceremony of the photo exhibition, Welcoming Japan Through Diplomat's Eyes, 2023. This exhibition displays the photographs taken by ambassadors residing in Japan as well as other diplomats. This is a historical event with the initiative of the Diplomatic Corps uh, dating back over 25 years. In addition uh, to the beautiful photos, I was amazed at the perspectives of the uh, diplomats who have captured the charm of Japan that Japanese people will not normally notice. I was deeply impressed. The exhibition will be in Tokyo until the 9th, and then uh, on to Kobe and Yokohama as well. I hope that many people will visit the photo exhibition 
and feel the attractiveness of Japan and its ties to the world. I will continue to participate in these outreach activities going forward. These are all the comments. If you have a question, please raise your hand. When you are named, please come up to the microphone. Yomuri Newspaper, yoda -san, please. My name is Yoda from Yomuri Newspaper. At the onset, you talked about the visits to several countries. You are visiting Thai and Vietnam. And these are countries that the Prime Minister visited. Uh, and uh, Thailand uh, was visited by Minister Hayashi as well. So what are the expectations that you hope to glean from this visit? From the 8th to the 13th of October, I'll be making the first bilateral visit as former Minister of Foreign Affairs to Brunei, Vietnam, Laos, and Thai, Thailand. I would like to take this opportunity to meet with uh, various ministers and government officials. This year is the commemorative year of the 50th year of ASEAN-Japan Friendship and Cooperation. And through this visit, I would like to uh, utilize this opportunity. In this historical turning point uh, of the 50th anniversary of the friendship between Japan and ASEAN, uh, last week I participated in the General Assembly United Nations High Level Week. And I felt the very strong expectations toward the ASEAN nations uh, from the world. I would like to take this opportunity to further enhance Japan-ASEAN relationship through this visit. I have already made initial comments uh, regarding the visit. And uh, in addition, uh, this year marks the 50th anniversary of Japan-Vietnam diplomatic relations. Also, through this visit, I would like to uh, confirm the further uh, collaboration and cooperation on a wide range of, range of issues uh, in economy, politics, security, and human exchange, as well as various international and global challenges. Also, Thailand is home to over 80,000 Japanese nationals and over 6,000 Japanese companies. Uh, so Thailand is the largest uh, business base for uh, Japan. Also, uh, Thailand is uh, serving as the coordinating country for Japan to ASEAN. And I hope to build a relationship with the new administration and further enhance the close economic ties, as well as discuss various international issues. Thank you. Mr. Kawaguchi, Mr. Kawaguchi from Mainichi Shimbun, please. Kawaguchi from Mainichi Shimbun. Uh, I would like to ask questions uh, related to your visit. Uh, as uh, the uh, visit to foreign countries, uh, this is the first time, but uh, what, for what reasons did you decide to visit ASEAN countries? As was mentioned earlier, in December, uh, there will be a special summit uh, between uh, Japan and ASEAN. And uh, what will be the expectation uh, to that uh, meeting? Uh, with respect to ASEAN countries, uh, they have a remarkable economic growth recently. Now they have the population of 670 million, and this is now the center of the world growth uh, with vitality. Uh, ASEAN uh, to our country uh, is a close business partner. Not only that, but as the a true friend, uh, of a heart to heart, uh, we would like to uh, cooperate together uh, for the peace, stability, and the prosperity of the region. Uh, this is the year to mark the historical milestone uh, between Japan and ASEAN friendship and cooperation. Uh, we feel that the conference uh, in December uh, will be based on the accumulation of uh, progress of our efforts up to now and to uh, look for uh, the direction uh, of the future Japan ASEAN relations uh, by sharing uh, the challenges in the future and to lay out the new vision in the future. So this is uh, one of the most pivotal uh, events uh, of diplomacy which is expected within the year. So 
as a foreign minister who will be responsible for finalizing the preparation for the summit of diplomacy, we decided uh, to select uh, these two countries, uh, these are four countries, as, uh, as the uh, country of the visit of the destination. Furthermore, uh, we would like to strengthen the economic relations even further to promote the rule of law and also to strongly promote uh, women uh, peace uh, security. Uh, Japan and ASEAN uh, should uh, join hands together to heighten the resilience against the global scale issues. And uh, this is uh, considered as my own agenda to resolve these issues. So even uh, with uh, these uh, four countries in ASEAN, with respect to these areas, we hope to see the progress of cooperation and to deliver the outcomes to play my role. Next question, please. NHK, Yosato-san, please. Igarashi from NHK. I would like to talk about the Japan-Korea relationship. Uh, the strategic uh, dialogue between the vice ministers between Japan and Korea was held uh, for the first time in nine years. Yesterday, I would like to ask for your comments. Also, do you have any plans to uh, visit uh, Korea? With regards to your first question, on the 5th of October uh, in Seoul, uh, South Korea, uh, for the first time in nine years, uh, the Vice Minister of Strategic Dialogue was held between Japan and uh, the Republic of Korea. Uh, this is uh, on the back of the agreement uh, reached uh, in the Japan-Korea summit uh, this March, and I believe that this is a very meaningful uh, dialogue. Uh, the two leaders are exercising strong uh, leadership to drive the bilateral relations and I would like to further enhance diplomatic communications. With regards to your second point, I will refrain from uh, commenting with conjecture uh, with regards to the future diplomatic uh, schedule or including my visit. However, uh, I am very much looking forward to future visits uh, to the country as an opportunity to connect to the future. Nemoto -san, uh, Mr. Nemoto uh, from uh, Nikkei Shinbun, please. Uh, Nemoto from Nikkei Shinbun. Uh, this is uh, again uh, related to uh, Japan and uh, Korea. So it is uh, approaching the 25th anniversary for the Japan Korea uh, Joint Declaration. Uh, so what are your views regarding the future uh, of uh, Japan-Korea relationship going forward? Also, uh, Ambassador Yoon uh, of Korea has uh, shown his expectations for a new declaration between Prime Minister Kishida and President Yoon. Uh, what are your views on this? I'm sorry, could you repeat your question? Oh, it is uh, 25 years since the Japan-Korea Joint Declaration. And what are your views regarding the future relationship between the two countries? Also, Ambassador Yun has shown some uh, expectations about a new declaration being issued by Prime Minister and President Yun. So what are your views on this? As I have mentioned on the 5th of October, for the first time in nine years, the Vice Minister of Strategic Dialogue was held. And this has been an important development. I would like to further enhance the communication between the two, the two countries uh, on diplomatic relations. However, uh, with regards to my visit to Korea, uh, as well as uh, future uh, plans, uh, I would like to refrain from making uh, comments on the uh, diplomatic uh, nature. Uh, but uh, in New York, I was able to have an excellent uh, talk with the Foreign Minister er Pak Jin, and I would like to maintain this positive momentum and continue to have uh, good dialogue uh, with Korean side. Next question, please. Mr. Hayashi from Kyodo News. From Kyodo News, my name is Hayashi. About Russia, I would like to ask question. President Putin uh, criticized Japan's uh, sanctions to Russia, and uh, if Japan uh, is prepared uh, to have dialogue uh, 
they will be prepared uh, to respond uh, to dialogues. Uh, based on this, and including the Northern Territory issues, uh, what are your thoughts about a diplomacy to Russia? Uh, in addition to that, according to the announcement from Ukraine, uh, with the missile attack uh, from Russia, uh, there were 50 victims. Uh, what are your thoughts to this as well? As you pointed out, I am aware of the statement made by President Putin. The aggression uh, of Russia to Ukraine uh, is outrageous act uh, which shakes the foundation of the international order. So it is, first of all, necessary to stop the aggression uh, by Russia immediately. We would like to liaise uh, with the international community, including G7, and uh, we would like to ensure uh, to have the diplomatic efforts, uh, including uh, severe sanctions. At the same time, uh, Japan and Russia are neighboring uh, countries, and uh, for all the items that we need to uh, work together as from the necessity, uh, we would like to uh, respond appropriately from the perspective of a being conducive to national interest in the international diplomatic relations. With respect to Northern Territories, we would like to make sure to maintain the policy to conclude the peace treaty to resolve this issue. And with respect to the second question, yesterday on 5th, uh, there was attack to Halkil in the eastern part of Ukraine. According to the announcement from the Ukraine government, uh, we are aware that uh, there are uh, many casualties amongst the civilians. Uh, from our perspective, uh, through Russian attack, uh, there are many civilian victims uh, in many parts of uh, Ukraine, which we consider as serious. The attack to civilians and the civilian facilities uh, are a violation of international law, and uh, they are totally not uh, justifiable and uh, strongly condemn them. Uh, with the continued aggression uh, to ensure uh, peace uh, in a fair and a perpetual manner to Ukraine, uh, we would like to strongly uh, promote sanctions to Russia and support to Ukraine. We would like to closely liaise with the international community to continue our efforts. Tass, please. Uh, my name is Aganov from TAS, and Related uh, to Russia, I would like to ask about uh, Mr. Suzuki's uh, visit to Russia uh, from Nippon Ishin. Uh, he had a meeting uh, with Mr. Uredenko, or Under Secretary in Moscow, and he asked for the resumption uh, of paying respect to ancestral grave uh, in northern territories and asked for negotiation to start for safe operation of the fish boats uh, of Japan. Uh, do you have a plan to receive an explanation about the position of Russia? Well, uh, I am aware uh, of this report and uh, also the statement uh, made by uh, Mr. Suzuki. But at this point in time, as you asked, uh, we don't have any plan to receive explanation for the details of his visit to Russia. At any rate, Russia's aggression to Ukraine uh, is outrageous act, uh, sh which is shaking the foundation of international order. And uh, we would like to lay ways with the international community together with G7. And uh, we would like to continue to promote our activities, including sanctions. Next question, igarashi san from NHK, please. I'm Igarashi. I'd like to talk about the Alps treated water. Uh, regarding the treated water from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, uh, the Itepco made the second uh, discharge yesterday. And this has been criticized strongly by uh, the China uh, government, and the embargo maintains is maintained. So uh, how do you seek the understanding from the China, China side? I'd like to seek your view. With regards to the discharge of Alps treated water. The first discharge was uh, conducted from the 24th of August. And through the monitoring result, we have confirmed that it is conducted as planned in a safe manner. And since then, uh, there have been uh, equipment inspections confirming that there are no issues. And I understand that uh, from yesterday, the second discharge was started 
and we will continue to provide meticulous explanation with high transparency and with the close collaboration with IEEA in providing uh, monitoring results and other explanations to deepen the understanding. With regards to China, we have made various efforts at various levels and opportunities responding to the questions and concerns, and we have made sincere efforts to explain uh, our position. We will continue these efforts and call for immediate removal of the import restrictions of Japanese food and ask for a scientific response. This is Yoda from Yomiri newspaper. This is a related question. With regards to the AOPS uh, treated water, uh, the foreign ministers are meeting uh, between the trilateral countries and uh, also the uh, summit meeting between Japan and China at the time of APEC uh, are planned. Uh, do you have any plans to uh, discuss this with China, uh, taking these opportunities? With regards to uh, meetings with uh, the Chinese side, there is nothing uh, being decided. At uh, this time, we will continue to provide uh, explanations to the international society, including China, uh, to seek for uh, understanding based on science and high level of transparency. We will continue these efforts, and we would like to call for the immediate removal of import restrictions and scientific-based actions. Matsuyama-san from Asahi newspaper, please. Matsuyama from Asahi Shinbun. I would like to ask about the confusion uh, in U.S. Congress. On third, uh, there was dismissal of uh, McCarthy, Speaker uh, of the House of Representatives, and as a result, uh, there is a sub military support uh, which uh, may, may, may to Ukraine, uh, there, which may have the possibility of stagnance, uh, which is led by the U.S. Would there be possible impact to U.S. and Japan? Uh, with respect uh, to uh, this discussion uh, in the U.S. Congress uh, on uh, the Ukraine support, uh, we would like to reserve a comment uh, for the internal affairs, but uh, we have interest to look at the situation. Based on that, uh, we have unwavering uh, U.S.-Japan uh, alliance, and uh, we feel that uh, there is a common recognition uh, across the parties in the U.S. as well. Miyagi san from Fuji TV, please. Miyagi from Fuji TV. Uh, Fuji Television has uncovered uh, that uh, the uh, diplomatic number plates uh, from the uh, Korean embassy uh, uh, has been driving cars uh, with a smoke glass above the Japanese legal standards. What are your views? Uh, with regards to this uh, incident, uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has made confirmation to the embassy of the Republic of Korea, and the embassy has responded that uh, in some parts of their vehicles, they had attached films that are not in compli compliance with the Japanese laws, and that they have already responded uh, so that they are now in compliance with the law. Based on the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, uh, diplomatic corps uh, must uh, follow the laws and regulations of the host nation. Uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs will continue to uh, communicate to the uh, a diplomatic corps uh, in our country to uh, be, com be compliant with the Japanese traffic and laws. This concludes the press conference. Thank you very much.